Um, I'm uh, Rob Kaufman, and I'm going to talk about testing philosophies, kind of go with the same uh, theme of testing that we were uh, kind of had tonight. And uh, so what are testing philosophies? One of the things that most talks about testing frameworks go into deep depth about is, you know, the one way that they structure their tests or the one sort of, you know, the how to do um, a given set of tests. And one of the things that doesn't get covered uh, real frequently is sort of what are the what and the where that people use to actually put those testing frameworks into practice. Um, this is one of the things that the Rails community has a lot of turmoil about. There are as many opinions as there are programmers. Uh, everyone does things a little differently. Um, it's not something that I think that the software development world has one settled true way that's the most effective for every situation. Um, so I just thought I'd give a little overview about what some of the big philosophies are right now. Um, and then if we have a little time, we'll talk about, you know, um, like what people are actually doing. So quick glossary, uh, unit tests. All these terms are really, really heavily over overloaded. You will see them defined hundred different ways and a hundred different books and in a hundred different talks. This is what I mean tonight when I'm using these words. Uh, unit testing are just testing the inputs and outputs of a method. Um, functional testing is testing a set of methods together. Integration testing is testing that a bunch of disparate software components are all working in concert. And acceptance testing is testing what the actual user sees and expects as they go through the application. The win. The win is one of the things that's a fairly popular debate. All of the agile disciplines talk about test first, um, which means you write your tests and then you write your code. And if you looked at the literature, you would say that that was the one true way of doing things. If you look at practice, you realize that most people, or many developers, still don't do that. Um, and there's a lot of uh, people who argue very vehemently that that you should write your tests after you write your code. Um, I don't necessarily agree with them, but they're there, and that's one of the philosophies that's really prevalent. Um, there's a, I would say the majority of people take some form of hybrid approach. Um, you see a lot of acceptance level testing has to get, get written after the code is done. Or maybe a specific shop does all of their acceptance level testing first, but then they do, um, unit testing only when they find bugs or have cases where they come up over and over again. So that's sort of, you know, which part of the testing are you going to do, you know, which of those four things that I just showed on my glossary page are when, you know, is, is in debate. And you have to find what really works for you and gives you optimal code. The what. So testing philosophy, number one, don't test. This is still the majority. They still outnumber us by a lot. Um, some of the reasons that people give is testing is hard and most developers aren't very good at it. That you're wasting a bunch of time that you could be, you know, doing something more productive with. Um, you can't test code that isn't there as an argument against doing test-first development, saying that you don't know what the code's going to look like, how could you properly test it? Um, tests are just as likely to contain bugs as the code that underlies, you know, that the, code is, the test code is testing. Anyway. Um, and that you should focus on other aspects of the development process, process like code review, just writing good software in the first place, and uh, acceptance testing or user level testing. There are people who are very good developers um, who use this philosophy. Uh, Hanson Catlin is one. He's the creator of Haml and uh, SAS. He, uh, his most famous app is the Wikipedia mobile app. If you've ever gone to Wikipedia on your phone, you've hit his app. Um, his dev shop never does tests. Um, and, uh, you know, he is, like I said, very vehement in the community about his loathing of automated tests and their frameworks. Opposite end of the spectrum, test everything. Um, this uh, philosophy says that every line of code should have test coverage. Um, it's really a whole school of philosophies because then the next question is, okay, how do you accomplish that feat? Where do you test what? 
in order to get complete code coverage. Um, and often when you talk about testing all the time, uh, you talk about having some sort of CI tool that's running the tests in the background for all the developers all the time. Let's talk about unit testing. Some test, you well, know, there's one sort of sub-discipline of the uh, task, uh philosophy is focusing on unit testing, that every line of code in your uh, piece of software should have unit tests associated with it. Um, they should be modular and small. They should test the interfaces, the inputs and the outputs of the method, um, and any side effects which you shouldn't have in your methods, but people still do. Um, that uh, they should focus on just the very like given part of a method. So if you have a method that sets up a configuration array and then performs some operation on the configuration array, that you would have unit tests for setting up that configuration array, and you have separate unit tests for performing the operation on that array. Um, in classic RSpec, um, the uh, model controller and view tests are um, designed to be the unit tests for your models, your controllers, and your views, all separately and independently of each other. Um, in a regular test unit Rails um, scaffold, you would have, they call the individual directories, unit, functional, and integration. Um, and they don't, the only thing that gets real unit tests are the models. Um, this is Martin Fowler. He writes a tremendous amount of stuff about the philosophies of testing. Um, a lot of it's really good. He does say something that I really don't like, which I'm going to talk about in the slide. One sort of sub-subculture of unit testing is um, that all tests should be completely independent from each other. Um, and uh, this often results in a heavy use of mocking and stubbing. Um, my problem with getting really crazy on the mocks is you get to a point where you're just sort of playing with yourself. You're testing your assumptions um, and not actually, you can have perfectly horrible code that has thousands of green tests. Um, and I feel like though this, the mocking and stubbing is very, very effective um, for certain scenarios, that it gets widely abused. And he and I argue about this when I see him. Um, all about integration. This says, okay, well, we took that deep dive and we tried to test each individual line of code very carefully, and that wasn't working for us. So what we're going to do is we're going back way out, and we're going to say we're always going to test the full stack. But the only thing we care about is testing the full stack. Cucumber is a great example of something that does integration testing. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't do multiple levels of testing and include integration testing. Um, it happens that Aflac, the uh, creator and primary developer of Cucumber, believes in this philosophy. He doesn't really think that you should spend a lot of time on unit testing. Um, he likes to stick at the high level and test the whole stack on every request. Uh, one of the real downfalls for this um, philosophy is integration tests are almost always slower. Um, and so the time it takes to test your application can get excruciatingly painful. On the other hand, if you come from compiled applications, you get back all that free time you used to have while you're waiting for your code to compile. Because now you're waiting for your tests to run. Russian doll testing. I love this uh, Beatles Russian doll set, by the way. Um, basically what this says, this is what you get when you first start out with Rails, is it says that you start out with you uh, unit test all your models, then your controller level tests, tests both the controllers and the models underneath them again, and then your integration level testing, which would be something like Cucumber or Rails has a built-in integration testing environment, um, would test your views, the controllers that put the views together, and the models all the way down the stack. Um, it's basically full framework testing. And uh, what happens is it means that you're getting full coverage on your models becomes fairly easy. You don't have to have a unit test for every single line of code in your models. You have to have a unit test for every single line, line in your model that isn't covered in your controller tests or your view tests. So the most common place functionality, the positive path for the models is generally tested really up high but the little dark corners where things get left out get pushed into unit tests. Making a test, it looks very important to you, but it's an integration test. 
Some people really feel that way. Um, some people, if you're doing, uh, if you're, if you're doing kind of a, a kind of test-driven um, approach where you do the really hard problems test-driven, um, and then you the simple stuff that you've done a hundred times you just blast through, um, then that would be the stuff that you would choose to unit test. Um, again, that's it's it's sort of like an gray area in between philosophies almost. Um, but the Russian doll, doll methodology gets you better coverage than generally either the all integration or the all unit unless you're really, really disciplined about it. Um, Yehuda Katz, uh, in fact, spoke at this very campus gosh, two years ago um, for the first time about this sort of hybrid test philosophy that he'd been working on. And a lot of people in a lot of other, um, like outside the Ruby world, have really come to, to go to. Um, and that is sort of a uh, unit test and integrate. Um, Basically, you should have the ability to write unit tests for each part of your code, for your models, for your controllers, for your views. Um, but for the most part, you're going to do a lot of your testing at that integration level. Um, so uh, Merv has a thing called request specs. And a request spec is, uh, hits the full stack. Um, and you're, not, you're discouraged from mocking out the models in those specs. Um, and then you're very much encouraged in the MERB framework to write uh, unit level testing for any helpers you have and for um, your models. Uh, I'm in RSpec for Rails 3.0, which is under development and has an alpha or beta version out, um, the MERB style request specs have been adopted. So they're still giving you the model, controller, and view specs capability, but they're also giving you this request style specs built right in. So what are we really going to do? Um, the truth is, every development situation is different. And these guys don't hate each other as much as you might think from their writing. Um, that we need to, as a community, keep pushing these ideas, keep moving it forward. We need to do a better job of finding out what people outside the Rails environment have been doing. Uh, one really bad dark corner that the Rails community could have avoided is fixtures. Fixtures are rough. And it turns out that that's been known since like 85, 86, when there's some really good papers were done on the subject. And yet in, you know, 2005, 2006, we walked whole heart, you know, did lead down that same path that had already been, you know, realized as a dead end. So we need to kind of not just talk amongst ourselves, but also talk to the community at large. So we're not going to have as much time for discussion as I'd hoped, but I would love to take some questions. No. Um, I think that uh, my personal philosophy is um, a very BDD approach. Um, I'm a big RSpec user. Um, I like Cucumber for anything that's hard or that changes a lot. So um, if you're building a e-commerce solution, then your checkout process should be written in Cucumber. You should have Cucumber specs for. Because if that breaks, you're host. You know, the stuff that, you know, if you're using someone else's well-tested and well-used uh, gem for authentication, do you need to spend a bunch of time writing Cucumber specs for your authentication? No, you really don't, I don't think. Um, if you find it is really brittle and it's breaking a lot, then you should have an integration spec for that. Um, and then, I, like I said, um, most of my individual methods have fairly good uh, unit test coverage, partially because I've gotten to a place in, you know, as a developer where I think that way. Um, uh, and partially because I run my own dev shop and I get interrupted all the time. And one thing that spec uh, first development gets you is a really good bookmark as to where you work. You go back and you read the spec you just wrote. You go, oh, yeah, this is what I was working on. No problem. OK. And you can pick up your, your work. And being able to, I, you know, I wish I could drive all the interruptions out. I just can't. And so having come to that conclusion, that's something I've really embraced. What's the harm in fixtures? Um, the problem with fixtures is they tend, developers tend to get, uh, how's the best way to put this? Basically, what happens is they become really brittle. You start getting a lot of test failures. Um, 
because developer A changed his pet fixture and that's used in 300 other tests and now all 300 tests are broken. Um, you end up you know, frequently with either a very small quantity of fixtures um, that anytime any one of them gets changed or updated for some certain case, break all kinds of tests, or you end up with a huge copious quantity of fixtures, which has the problem of, say you out of fields of the database. Now you have to update all 355 user fixtures um, with new fake data, and uh, that becomes a problem. Uh, generally, uh, factories are pretty heavy, in heavy use to sort of solve that problem, um, which means you're creating unique objects with the right properties when you need them. Um, another common solution is uh, mocking, um, but I already told you that I'm not the biggest fan of that. So. All right, thank you guys, I appreciate it.